Hey guys, Mark here, and today I've got a phone that I've been wanting to use and try out since it came out back in 2019, the Samsung Galaxy Fold. This is such a cool phone in many different ways, but as I'm sure you're aware of by now, it's got a lot of flaws too. If you haven't heard of this phone before, this is a folding phone from Samsung that has a pretty small form factor on the outside when it's folded up, but it unfolds to a massive 7.3 inch AMOLED display on the inside. So why am I taking a look at this thing now? Well, for a few different reasons. The first is that the price has dropped off a fair bit since it came out, which is good because this thing was crazy expensive at launch. And the second is that we should be seeing the Galaxy Fold 2 at Unpacked 2020. So I wanted to try out the first Fold to really get a baseline for how the Fold has improved with its second generation. The biggest reason though, is that I really wanted to try out a folding phone for myself to see if the hype is what it's cracked up to be. A lot of the tech reviewers on this platform claim that folding phones are the future. So I wanted to see for myself. As always, I'll start with the design of this phone, but I'm gonna be quick with this one because I just really wanna talk about my experience using the Fold. The Galaxy Fold is not just a folding phone, but it's also a dual screen phone, and not like the LG G8X or Microsoft Surface Duo. On the outside, it's got a teeny 4.6 inch AMOLED display with a slightly higher than 720p resolution, but on the inside, it's got a huge 7.3 inch dynamic AMOLED display. The display on the outside plays a big part of how the phone looks overall, and in this case, it's not a great look. The bezels are so thick that I'm not even sure I can call them bezels anymore. I actually had friends laugh at how bizarre this phone looked from the outside, and they're not wrong. It's one heck of a weird looking phone. Of course, the laughs disappear when you unfold it, and you can get some pretty shocked looks when you unfold the fold in public. The inner display has an aspect ratio of around four by three, making it more akin to a tablet than a smartphone. And that's basically the appeal of a folding phone. It's a tablet that folds up to fit in your pocket. As amazing as that is, the Fold's inner display comes with its share of caveats. The first and most obvious is that large corner notch that houses a front-facing camera and a depth sensor. It's the most unsightly part of this inner screen, but it's not the only eyesore. The other one is that crease. Now, when you're using it yourself, it's not nearly as bad as you might think, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but it's definitely there and you will notice it from time to time. The other problem with the inner display is that it's one of the most fragile screens on the market. There's no coating of glass on the inside of the screen, since we haven't really figured out how to fold real glass yet, so you're stuck with plastic. Easily scratchable, soft plastic. Thankfully, the rest of the Fold is built like a tank, and it feels like it too. At almost 270 grams, it's the heaviest phone I've ever held, and because of how thick it is, it feels like you're holding a small brick. That brick comment is actually a good thing, though. I feel like if I dropped this thing or even threw it across a room, it wouldn't break, as long as it was folded shut, at least. The hinge is nice and solid with a very satisfying fold clap thanks to the strong magnets on the inside. It's got a fingerprint reader on the side for snappy unlocking, stereo speakers on both the top and bottom of the front half of the Fold, and it's got a Type-C port for charging. Of course, it's also got wireless and reverse wireless charging if you wanna charge it that way. I talked briefly about the two cameras on the inside display, but that's only two of the six total cameras on this phone. A standard wide angle in the front cover, a wide angle camera and a depth sensor on the inside display, and an ultra wide, standard, and telephoto on the back of this phone. Six different camera modules. That's kinda crazy. Crazier still is that all the cameras minus the depth sensor can shoot 4K up to 60 FPS. Add to the fact that you can use the inner display as a huge viewfinder and you can easily see why the Fold is one of the most versatile phones out there when it comes to shooting photos and video. I took the Fold out to a little town called Bonavista and I got some awesome shots. On the 7.3 inch display of the Fold, they look incredible, but when you expand them onto something like my 27 inch iMac, you can start to see all the little imperfections. The live focus picture mode does a good job in a lot of scenarios, but can frequently blur out things that are supposed to be in focus. Color and contrast can vary from photo to photo and sometimes isn't consistent, but sharpness is definitely on point. Some pictures are comparable or better than the photos coming from my 11 Pro Max and some aren't. I have a feeling that has less to do with the hardware in the phone and more to do with the lackluster software, something that Apple and Google have been doing really well lately. Even still, the phone captures some great shots and is particularly good in areas where dynamic range is necessary, or high dynamic range is necessary, like this shot of a room in the inn that we stayed at. Video is good for the most part too, but again, I feel like the color is a little lacking. Shots are more desaturated and shifted more blue than they look in real life, but overall, stabilization is good, and as I said before, this thing has six cameras, so it's extremely versatile. It also has live focus video, which takes advantage of that depth sensor on the inside of the fold to blur out the background behind you. It's limited to 1080p though, and it's unstabilized, so it's not that useful in its current state. 
If Samsung can improve the live focus video and the inconsistent color issues, the Fold would be a really, really awesome phone to vlog with. All right, now let's talk about how this phone feels to use. In all honesty, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride of emotions. In the first couple of hours of using this phone, I was in awe. Open, close, open, close, open, close. I just couldn't get enough of that hinge action and opening up to a small tablet sized screen. But then as the wow factor wore off and I started using the Fold as I would a normal phone, I was hit with a different set of feelings. Wow, this, wow, phone, this phone is phone heavy. heavy. It's kind of awkward to hold too. I don't want to press on the inside too hard or it'll damage the screen. So do I hold it like this or maybe like this? Wait, no, if I hold it like this when I'm watching a video, I'll cover up the stereo speakers. I don't know how to use this thing. And it was like that for at least a few days. The phone is such a departure from all the other normal smartphones that I've used that it took some time to really figure out how to use this phone properly. But after a few days, I got more and more used to the form factor and it settled in as the new normal. Now, after about a month of using it, it's the best thing ever. If I need to take a quick phone call or quickly look at a text message, the front cover display is perfect for that. Want more screen real estate to watch a YouTube video or browse Twitter? No problem, just unfold and enjoy. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, maybe give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The screens share continuity in most apps. So if I open Google Maps, for example, on the small screen and I wanna open up to a bigger screen, all I have to do is unfold the phone. Multitasking is a dream come true. It really comes in handy when I wanna watch a YouTube video and make some notes. All I have to do is drag YouTube over to one side and then my notes app over to the other. And of course, it has the performance to do it in spades. The Snapdragon 855 is around a year old now, but it's perfectly capable and the 12 gigs of RAM provides plenty of headroom for multitasking. It also has a whopping half a terabyte of storage, which I'll probably never be able to use up. If I'm being picky, I'd like to have a high refresh rate display, but if it comes down to either high refresh rate or more durable screen, I take the latter because that's another area where the fold falls apart. And in the case of the original devices, literally. Since taking back the original phones and fixing them by adding dust caps and the thicker bezels to protect the inner display, the Fold's track record has been actually pretty good. But despite that fact, the inner display is still very fragile as shown by Zach on Jerry Rig Everything. He was literally able to scratch the inside display with his fingernails. And if you honestly think that that's not gonna play on your mind when you use this phone, you're just wrong. I'm constantly treating the inside of this phone like it's gonna spontaneously combust at any second. Never pushing on the screen to close the phone, only lightly tapping on the display when I need to, and of course, keeping it far away from water because the entire phone has no water resistance whatsoever. But that's the price you pay right now for a tablet that you can fit in your pocket. Yeah, there are some big phones out there, but none of them compare to the experience that you get from watching videos or browsing the web on this thing. The inner display is a near 1440p AMOLED screen, remember. It's got HDR10 Plus certification and colors and contrast are darn near perfect. The aspect ratio does make it a little bit weird to watch modern movies and TV shows though. Since it's a four x three aspect ratio, you're gonna get some pretty thick black bars on the top and bottom of the display. Switch on an older movie or TV show, however, and it quickly becomes the most ideal media consumption device ever. The stereo speakers are great, as long as you're careful not to cover them with your fingers, and the immersion factor is fantastic. But Mark, what about that crease? Honestly, it's not a big deal. When I first got the phone, the crease was nearly invisible. It's gotten a little bit worse over the time that I've had it, but as long as you're looking at the phone straight on, most of the time you can't even see it. It's most visible when you're looking at the phone off axis or when the screen is completely black, but I'd argue that even then the corner notch is a bigger eyesore than that crease is. While the inner display is the ideal size for most things, the outer display is unideal for most, is that even a word, unideal? Anyway, you get the point. 4.6 inches is small, but it should be perfectly usable, right? Well, no, not really, because it's got a 21 by nine aspect ratio. It's a really skinny display. And for someone with really big thumbs, it's nearly impossible to text on this thing without screwing up every second word. It also just feels really cramped in here and it's not fun to use. Like I said earlier, it's good for taking a phone call or checking a text message, but if you wanna respond, you're gonna wanna open up the display and take advantage of Samsung's split keyboard. There's just so, so much to talk about when it comes to this phone. There's a bunch of stuff I haven't even mentioned, like the fact that it comes with its own case and a set of Galaxy Buds in the box. But what I really wanted to talk about is whether or not this form factor could be 
the future. And from what I've seen with my own two eyes and my own two hands, and you don't see with your hands, but you know what I mean, I think it absolutely could be, but I think Samsung has a long way to go. The Galaxy Fold is a great first attempt, but that's all it is. It's an attempt. It's nowhere near ready for mass adoption, in my opinion, even if we disregard the crazy $2,000 price tag that it cost at launch. The inner display is too fragile. The phone has no water or dust resistance whatsoever. The outer display is too small and awkward to use regularly. And in general, the phone can be just awkward and uncomfortable at times to hold. So if I were to make a list of what I'd like to see in the Fold 2, I think the biggest things are a boost to durability, like the UTG screen that came out on the Z Flip last year, a larger, more usable front display, some form of water or dust resistance, and maybe a high refresh rate display if they can swing it. Of course, all that will be relatively useless if no one can afford it, and if they come out with another $2,000 plus phone, that might just be the case again, we'll just have to see. But to sum up this video, I can finally say that yes, folding phones are the future, and I really hope more are coming soon. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel, and as always, have a great day.